Testing one, two. Michael J. Test the third. <clears throat> All right. Um, just want to greet all those that are on Skype with us. We have um, Claudia, the wife of John. That's, that's scripture, Claudia, the wife of John. We have Steve Warnock, and we need to be in prayer for Steve because uh, he's got I'll just say some an ailment, and we need to just hold him up in prayer and stand with him. And uh, and I imagine it's cold in Finland right now, <laughs> which has nothing to do with the real issue, but it just <clears throat> and dark. Yes, that's right. And of course, we got Sharon. Hi, Sharon. And we got Nicola. Wow, what time is it now there? <laughs> and we have Mary, the mother of ben. Kelly <laughs> and Ben. Mary, the mother of Kelly and Ben. Hallelujah. All right. Um, <clears throat> before we start, I'd like to announce that all of you, not just the Bible school students, will have homework. Um, I'll tell you what the homework is and then I'll tell you that I will, will give you a period of time to do this for a certain reason. So let me tell you the homework. The homework is going to be <clears throat> to find ten examples of Christ manifesting the kingdom. And of course that must be confined to the Gospels. There's a reason for that because that's the name of this class, this course. All right? <clears throat> now, here's the thing. I'm not going to require this next week because it occurred to me that some of you may not have been listening as intently as you needed to be. <clears throat> uh, and you really have no clue what the kingdom <laughs> is about. <clears throat> Which uh, is not what most people, at least, uh, uh, are saying that it's about. <clears throat> and so um, I'm going to continue. I'm not going to change up anything, but I'm going to continue to share on the kingdom and its manifestation. <clears throat> um, and from that, I want you to draw the... the whole meaning of what this thing is about the kingdom of God and uh, if you will remember we began this course by saying <clears throat> that the gospel as we know it the, the saving gospel that we know <clears throat> uh, we went through a bunch of scriptures and stuff and we showed that that gospel is not in the gospel and we began to show that the true setting forth of the Gospels was Jesus setting it forth first in word or in teaching, and not just him, but John the Baptist and the disciples. <clears throat> first, the preaching of the Gospel, I mean, the preaching of the kingdom, excuse me. And then the demonstration of that. Well, I'm asking you for examples of Jesus demonstrating my definition of the kingdom. Because you can get any old kingdom book out of any old bookstore and write a bunch of stuff and all you're going to do is make me mad, okay? <laughs> <coughs> Just kidding, but nonetheless... So anyway, I, <clears throat> I will give you literally a week just to mull on this <laughs> without expecting anything a week or two from now. But um, uh, for those that really do understand what we're talking about, it could actually be a lot of fun and really cool to dig in and see Jesus demonstrating the very things that he's teaching. So 
I also will say that if you really, really don't understand, um, there are people that you can go to here that know everything. Um, and they will help you. Caitlin's one. <laughs> and Christy's the other. <laughs> So all of you feel free to go to them or email them or call them long distance collect <laughs> from Finland. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> we are going to begin. Turn with me if you would to Matthew chapter 18. <clears throat> Matthew 18. And you probably don't remember so much, but last class, we went through Matthew 5, 6, 7. <clears throat> we hit some stuff in 11 and 13. And we are progressing through the gospel right now of Matthew. And we're progressing in <clears throat> showing examples where the word kingdom, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, kingdom, however it's used, in, in any form, we're, we're showing uh, the scriptures when, it, when that name, that subject, the kingdom, when it's brought up, what the, what the point is, what the point of it is. <clears throat> Some of you may remember... <clears throat> Sorry. Some of you may remember us going to uh, Mark, and um, <clears throat> the scripture there said this in chapter 4 said, To what do you like in the kingdom, or to what can you compare it? It is like taking something that is the least, the smallest, the lowest. A, mustard, a grain of mustard seed. It, he said it's the least of all seeds. But when and after it is sown, meaning when that seed <clears throat> that is the least is put into death, when it is sown, when the least, when that which has been, has come across as the least is sown into death, then it becomes a greater manifestation than anything that was before it. All right. To what shall we liken the kingdom? <clears throat> we liken it to Christ crucified. To what shall we liken those who are in the kingdom? We liken them to the same spirit that Jesus had in his crucifixion as described all over, but certainly Philippians 2. <clears throat> all right. So that being said, that, that should be enough for Caitlin and Christy to share hours of material with you. <clears throat> all right, we're in Matthew 18, and we're going to look at verse 1 first. <clears throat> At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Who is the greatest? All right. <clears throat> Many people who examine the kingdom, <clears throat> when they talk about the kingdom of God or any kingdom, they talk about becoming great. They talk about, and they, these guys did. They talk about becoming something. They talk about power. They talk about <clears throat> recognition. They talk about honor. They talk about all of these things. <clears throat> Who better than Jesus <laughs> to find out the true meaning, the true view of the kingdom as he understands it? Kelly, would you bring me one of those Kleenexes there? <clears throat> Every time I get in this subject, I just feel like crying. I think I really only needed one, but... <laughs> the 
bad thing is, this will be on videotape forever and ever. And no one will ever take me seriously. And I don't blame them. I'm the least of any teacher that ever was. Okay. All right, so that's the question, you know. Uh, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then drop down to verse 3 where Jesus answers. And said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom. All right, now there's several different... You know, I feel bad for this table over here. No, 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 no. We, we, we got it. We, I know, she showed me. With you two back there, <clears throat> I just have to say, salut. <clears throat> All right. We are reading the scriptures, are we not? <laughs> we need to be a little more holy in this room. <clears throat> and said, Verily I say unto you, except, except. Now, do you ever notice these words? I mean, think about the, the most simple one, except the man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. <clears throat> except he be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Except, except, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. If it doesn't happen, <clears throat> there will be no fruit. Um, except ye be converted and become as little children, you're not going to enter the kingdom. All right. <clears throat> We're going to look at a few scriptures shortly. Uh, in fact, it'll be in the next chapter that will, that will deal with this uh, specifically in relationship to children. Uh, because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about that, and, and um, we're going to try to take it apart a little bit so that we can <clears throat> see if, if it's what it's saying and if it's going along the lines of what we feel like the Lord's saying about the kingdom. <clears throat> then he says in verse 4, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself, all right, notice this word as little, as this little child. Okay, so he's, he's talking about the kingdom, and he's talking about humbling yourself or becoming the least. And to what shall we like in the kingdom? It is like a seed that is small and lowly, and, and so it dies to bring forth something greater. That's the kingdom. That's the, that's the government of Christ, the governing nature <clears throat> not to exalt himself. Jesus didn't raise himself. The Father raised him. Okay. Not to exalt himself, but with a firm belief that um, if you seek to save, you lose. <clears throat> if you lose, you gain. If you die, you live. If you... <clears throat> the principles that are totally contrary to this world, but, but, but why contrary to this world? Because they're contrary to us. They're contrary to the way we think. They're not just thinking patterns, though. Those thinking patterns that are contrary to Christ crucified <clears throat> are birthed out of our nature. We are selfish. We are self-centric. Even when we're not evil selfish, we're thinking about ourselves. We are. Oh, if I could just... <clears throat> if I had some little robots that flew, and that could, I could send them out with all of you from here, and they could watch you and read your mind and read your motives, and that every point that anything ever popped in your mind or any reach or anything, <laughs> it was... <clears throat> That is proof that you are self-centric. And then it would add, Randy is right. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm totally joking. I think you're wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> All right. Whosoever, therefore... 
Whosoever therefore shall humble himself. All right. <clears throat> so there is the first part. You have to see that to the Lord, the kingdom, and the, the least are humbling or <clears throat> the lowest seed or all, over and over and over again. There is this in, inherent view that life comes out of death, that greatness comes out of lowliness. And we'll never change his mind on that. And we can make all the doctrines we want, and we can build churches called the Kingdom Now Church, or the, you know, <clears throat> we are the children of the King Church, or whatever, whatever. We can do all that we want, and it will never change God's view in his heart because this is who he is. It is not a suggestion to earth people because he's God, and he just randomly decided I was going to approach them this way. This is all according to being, his being. And once we get that, and we get past the teaching, and we get past the ink on white paper, <clears throat> when we began to see God, we will see, we will see that this is him. And therefore his kingdom is not a set of rules that we obey. I'm the king and these are my rules and I decided them and I just thought they're, you know, I like this one, you know, pick that. Well, I can do that, I'm king. But instead, they are not rules within him, even if we read them as rules. They're not rules within him. They are They are birthed, the words of it are birthed from the essence of his being. Okay, so that's, that's why we have to see God, you know. But yet, what does the scripture say? No man has seen God and lived. So, Brother Randy, why are you encouraging us to see God? Because we want Christ to live in you. Because that's the goal. More of Jesus, less of us. That's the goal. <clears throat> and it becomes your, it, it particularly becomes your goal when you understand that's the way he is, that's the way his kingdom is going to be. If you, if you want to put it in terms of heaven, that's the way heaven is going to be. If I'm miserable with it now, if I don't like the teaching of it now, I'm not going to like eternity. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's... <clears throat> That, that's just facing up to stuff. Well, okay, but then we have to we have to be honest and say, has the king has the king in his essence in his nature been formed in me? And if we say no, then it is going to be contrary to us. It's not. It's going to rub against the grain of us. The goal is not to say, well, he's one way and I'm another way, and I can never live this, and you know. And then run away and go do whatever that we think is going to make us happy. <clears throat> the answer is, reveal yourself in me. Reveal your, you, you have to put it on these terms, reveal your life and my death. If you don't do that, and if you don't ever lay hold of that, it's all religion. It is. And it's asking of you things you can't do. <laughs> you might be able to do some of them, but the way that this is devised is, if it's not Christ, then, then you're required to keep everyone, and if you break one law, you've broken everything. You say, that's strict. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> that's fact. It's proof because you're going to slip up somewhere because you're not Christ. And you never will be Christ. But he will live in you. And he will manifest his nature. And he can do what we can't do. You know, the disciples said, who then can be saved? I would have said, that's great, boys. You got it. 
That's the right answer. That is so good. Jesus said, well, with men, it's impossible. But with God, with Christ in you, all things are possible. Glory to God. <clears throat> all right. So I already spent too much time on that one little tiny thing here. But let's go to Matthew 19. <clears throat> and here we get into the children thing a little deeper, although those last scriptures I didn't cover everything. Matthew 19. Let's start with verse 12. <clears throat> you know... This scripture means a lot to me, but I don't know that people will understand it too much. But I'm going to read it. For there are some eunuchs who were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. All right. Um, to become a eunuch means to cut off that portion of man that uh, bears the seed uh, so that he can produce after his kind, so that he can uh, bring forth something uh, that makes him happy, children, that sort of thing. <coughs> Um, and Jesus is saying Jesus is saying that there's some people that were born they had they couldn't reproduce and there's many like uh, if you remember the story of the Ethiopian eunuch in the book of Acts he was made that way people took him and did that to him. And, um, and many times they would put him in charge of the harem or whatever, so they know that they're safe. <clears throat> and uh, then Jesus said that there's some people who are eunuchs for the kingdom. What is, how are we ever gonna understand that much less all of these events when he brings it up <clears throat> if we don't understand the hidden wisdom of God if we don't understand Christ crucified if we don't understand selfless giving <clears throat> as the thing that is brings a blessedness blessed are the poor in spirit blessed are the meek blessed are the you know you know, <clears throat> and the, just the examples we've covered so far, not even counting what we're going to cover. There is no explanation for that unless you understand that there are some men who have not physically done this, but they have, as it were, well, maybe I, maybe I wrote some of this here. Some, because of the kingdom, may have limited their rights and their privileges and their, ex and their abilities. Okay? When they could have been more, they could have been, here it comes, greater. They could have had more. They could have, <clears throat> um, they could have set their course to gain. I know, I know a lot of Christians that, particularly during, what, the 80s, uh, 90s, <clears throat> that they, they became Christians because there was teaching such as success in life and, and prosperity and you can have and you don't have to be a peasant and you don't have to be this. Guess what? You don't have to be that. You don't have to be it. There are some who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom's sake because you may not have to do that when it comes to entering the kingdom, not salvation, not, we're not talking about salvation, we're talking about the kingdom. 
there's some who, who saw the nature of the kingdom. Can I say it different? Saw the nature of the king that ruled them, ruled in them. They saw Jesus and they saw him for who he is. <clears throat> and um, it's funny, I was just checking uh, <clears throat> one of my recordings that Deb always wants me to record when I'm, and I was down in Houston and I recorded them and, and the first session was in a house <clears throat> and it was in Abel's house. And uh, <laughs> I was listening just into the recording to see how it went and whatever. Uh, and about as often as that ah, ah, ah was going, there was a smoke detector that the battery was, it was telling us that the battery was, you know, about gone. And every, about as often as that was going beep, beep. <laughs> I went, okay, that was really good. <clears throat> sure. Anybody who hangs through this all the way through is a real sport. <laughs> all right. All right, let's go on beyond that here into the very next verse. So, so even though it sounds like we've broken something here, this is written in order. This is the next thing. There are no numbers. It was just numbers were put later, verses. Were, it was put into verses later. It's just one writing. So eunuch, da 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 da. There's some for the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Whoever can receive this, okay. Not everybody's gonna get it. Verse thirteen. Then were there brought unto him little children. Notice the word then. Okay. So he says this, and then <laughs> here comes something that that has to do with this subject. <clears throat> then were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray and the disciples rebuked them. Okay. Don't bother Jesus. He's a busy man. He's, he's, a, you know, he's a rabbi. He's a master. He's the Messiah. He's the son of God. Get those children out of here. Okay. In verse 14, and Jesus said, of course, I like the King James better. <laughs> the King James, it says, suffer the little children. But <clears throat> it just means allow them, permit them. So Jesus said, suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so some men have become eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven, for the, for the kingdom's sake. And then these children are brought. And Jesus was just teaching him about it. And he said, he can receive it. Whoever can receive it, whoever gets it, whoever, is anybody getting it? Whoever can get this, let him receive it. And then they bring little children and they go, get them kids out of here. As I say when I'm speaking in a Spanish speaking church, saca la vaca. Get them kids out of here. It's actually get that cow out of here. <laughs> it's <laughs> and so they, <clears throat> Uh, so anyway, so I wrote uh, first in relationship to the eunuch, some because of the kingdom may have limited their rights and privileges and abilities. For example, in this story, little children are being rejected from higher rights. But Jesus doesn't say children as such. And, and here's the point. Jesus doesn't say children as such are of the kingdom okay now that's the way most people read this so everybody wants to like start sucking their thumb and wearing diapers and stuff Ooh, i want to become like a little child you see what i mean i mean there is sort of that mentality it's like oh or or they say oh you have to become innocent it's not talking about all that i mean i've heard every kind of thing you can imagine i probably taught it no probably you know, um, that's, I am a living example of why you have to stay teachable. Or you'll never grow and you'll never see a bigger, wider picture. <clears throat> Jesus says here, to come unto me for of such 
for of such, my word in here, but Jesus doesn't say children as such are of the kingdom, but all such who are like this. They're little, they're small. Anybody remember what the kingdom is like and unto? Which is the least of all seeds. But if it dies, it becomes greater and remains. There's the resurrection. Okay. We've got, we've got a perfect example of that right here. We've got an example of the least and those who really don't have rights and, the, and those who really aren't big enough to grab it for themselves and that are being put down and Jesus takes care of the least. And they didn't have to be children. They were just an example of such. This is of, of such like this that are under this kind of thing that are the least, that are put down, that are whatever. But they do it for my sake. This is, they're, they're perfect for the kingdom. Some of y'all are following this. Anybody getting this? Because it's the word God's tasty. Didn't he say taste and see? It's tasty. <laughs> All right. Also, I said, <laughs> also it is difficult not just for someone with a lot of money I guess that goes on to say that. Oh, yeah, okay, so it's talking about the, the, the uh, rich young ruler. Um, and then verse 23, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall with difficulty enter into the kingdom of heaven. Notice the usage of the word the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't say salvation. There is a difference, people. There are his. You know? People read this and they go, am I going to hell because I'm rich? No, you're going to hell because you're you. It needs to be Christ. You know? <clears throat> Sorry. It could be put better. I, I admit it. Okay. All right. Um, Verse 24, and again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a, a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Well, here it is. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. <clears throat> so what does that mean? With men... Getting into the kingdom of God, if you have money, is about like a camel trying to get through the, an eye of a needle, okay? But with God, he can be rich and still make it. Is that what, is that what it's saying? No, that's not what it's saying. <laughs> but I mean, can you, can you see how somebody could read it like that? You, can, you know, our little minds need to be renewed. We need to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, not just the information. <clears throat> All right. So, also it is difficult not just for someone with a lot of money. We're not talking about someone with a lot of money. It is difficult not just for someone with a lot of money, but for any who are rich in anything to enter because their life principle and identity has been about acquiring and gain. So this is this this concept Jesus threw out to the rich young ruler. I mean, that's why uh, you know the guy said, uh, "Well, he went away sorrowing." You know, why, why did he do that? Why didn't he just follow Jesus? Because everything within him had he was again he was rich, he was young, he was a ruler. How do you get? How do you do that? <laughs> you read somebody's ten steps to. Success and riches, you know, and to, if you do that, it proves that you're pursuing those things, and it is it draws you in to that, and it makes you view the the 
hidden wisdom of God, the cross, that's foolishness. Go, well, that's stupid. That's not the way to go. That's not the way to go. No, it is. <clears throat> All right. And that's why he left. He didn't, he didn't talk about it. He didn't, you know what I mean? He went, well, this is, this is not my cup of tea. It's not the way I roll. <clears throat> All right. So uh, let's look at verse 20. Verse 20. I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 20. Chapter 20 and verse 21. Or let's do 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children. The mother of Zebedee's children. With her sons. Worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. Wow. There's a lot in there. It's just bad, people. We are just messed up. We think Jesus is there so that we can wind dangle him. Excuse my Texan. So we can wind that and write that down, that word right wind dangle. <clears throat> that we, you know, that we can uh, manipulate him and you know, look, Jesus, I know that you're you care about us, you know, and that you <clears throat> have our best interest in mind. And my two sons, they're good boys. Well, maybe they are, but mom, you're not. You know what I mean? Because you're trying to, you know, you're trying to get into the kingdom another way. And Jesus said there are thieves and robbers that try to get in another way. I am the door. You ever looked at a door? If you ever really look at a door, the top part of it is a cross. I mean, it is. And you're only going to get in there through Christ crucified. That's the door. So you can't, so you can't be setting up things for your own promotion. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Well, does that mean you'll never get promoted? No. But you know what? You need to take the lowest seat if you want to get promoted. You know what I'm saying? You need to take the lowest seat because Jesus said, "Take the low." When anybody has a has a feast and da 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 da, and all everybody's taking the higher seats and trying to look good, you take the lowest seat. And then he said, you know, and if the master of the house says, hey, what are you doing? Way down over there. Come up here. Then you will have honor before all. What is the honor? The honor is someone else, someone higher, God, someone honoring you and saying that. And, and when he does that, you don't go, oh, no, I couldn't. You know what I mean? You're sitting there in the lower seat, and Jesus says, come up here. You go, oh, no, no. I'm much too humble. No, you're an idiot. Well, you are. You have to understand the balance of this thing. The balance is not that you're seeking that, but if he gives it to you, then you take it because you take what is ever comes from his hand. It's a nail-scarred hand. There's a good chance he's going to have hand you cross things, you know what I mean? But there will also be times of resurrection when he says, come up here. It just depends on the time of the season and what it, where it's at and the whole scale. But let's face it, in this world, there is way more people trying to get resurrected than there are people trying to enter into his death. And guess where resurrection comes from? <laughs> That's where it comes. There can't be a resurrection. You can't resurrect something that wasn't dead. You know, I'm going to resurrect this here glass of Welch's 100% juice. It's not dead. Somebody says, I just want, res I want to walk in resurrection power. Well, good. Go to the cross and die for God's sake. Stop yelling about it. Yelling ain't going to bring it about. It's not all the, uh, and all that kind of stuff. And I don't care how someone preaches. People can preach that way. I'm fixing to do the dog thing again, so I hope you don't mind the barking deal. So. No, I'm not. I had another line that I didn't use, by the way. <clears throat> so I, I feel pretty spiritual. <laughs> and he said,
said unto her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, Grant that these, my two sons, may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left in thy kingdom. Oh, my God. You know, Jesus is so gracious here that I can't even believe it. I mean, that's the way I look at it. You know, I mean, I, I got a lot of conforming left to do. But, I mean, he is so gracious, you know, because he could have said, are you three totally ignorant of what the true meaning of this is all about? Have I been so long with you and have you not heard? Do you, you know, are my words falling to the ground? But, and that's the first word in the, in verse 22 is, but Jesus, but, but Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your son. But Jesus answered and said, do you know not what you ask? Okay, he said the same thing I said, but it was sweeter, wasn't it? Wasn't it? It was sweeter. You, you, don't, you don't even know what you're asking. Now, that'd be my way. He goes, you know not what you ask. I'm sure he spoke King James when he did it. You know, and did a little bit of this. You know, you, you know not what you ask. In Texan, we'd say, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't. You don't. Not in this case. Not in this specific thing. So then he says, are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink? And to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Okay. <clears throat> so what's he talking about? Jesus in the gar Garden of Gethsemane. He's in there. He asked the disciples to pray. He put them over here and he went a little further in, into the garden. And, he, cr and he, he cries out to God and he prays. And he's, he's so distraught in the situation of becoming sin and being separated from the Father for the first time in all of eternity. That he's, he's, he's sweating drops of blood and being in agony, the scriptures say. He prayed more earnestly. And he... He gets up to check a few minutes on his disciples, and they're asleep. He goes back. He's praying more, and this is the worst moment because in the garden, he's wrestling with this whole thing, and in the garden, he finally embraces, not my will, but thine be done. By the time he gets to the cross, you don't see a lot of, I don't want to do this, you know what I mean? He's, it's settled. He's He's the Lamb of God. He's taken it upon him. <clears throat> but drinking the cup to take the dregs of all of our sin, he says to these disciples, can you be blamed for everything that they did? Talking about in your, your generation or your time period, when your time comes. Can you, can you be cursed by everyone and spit on and mocked and maintain the kingdom spirit, the king spirit, the nature of the lamb, the, the father forgive them. They know not what they do. Can you, can you do that? What is their answer here? Do you see it? They say unto him, we are able. Yeah, we can do that. Now will you promote us? You know. <clears throat> and Jesus saith unto them, you, you shall indeed, <laughs> you shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to to them for whom it is prepared by my Father. And so I don't know 
I don't know what all that means in eschatology or in time or, you know, uh, so much that I don't know and don't understand. <clears throat> but I know, I know Jesus somewhat, and I know his bent, his his way that he approaches things, and it is, <clears throat> it is for sure if you're going to be with me and you're going to continue to follow me, there's going to be, you know, there's, you're going to, you're going to be blamed. You're going to, I mean, uh, you know, James was one of the first ones to die. You know, what, wasn't it that James or was it? I forget now. I think it was. I think it was the, the brother of John, one of the first ones to die. And you shall indeed. You shall indeed. And you're going to be looked at. You, you are bringing to Israel the message and the person that they have waited for since their existence. And you're going to be looked at as a criminal and a heretic and a fool and a deceiver. And they're going to kill you. Can you drink that? Well, if you're going to put it like that, no. You know, that's not what they said, you know. Yay. We are. We, we can do this. We are able. <clears throat> um, I wrote, place in the kingdom has to do with being the least. And they're trying to be the greatest. And I put a semicolon after that. Place in the kingdom has to do with being the least, with drinking the cup. It was hard for Jesus. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say to him? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I this hour. Well, if you know that this is your purpose and the cross is what you were headed for, why is your soul so upset? You're supposed to be walking in the spirit. Brother, get up, rejoice, dance. Jesus said, now is my soul troubled. Can you believe Jesus had soul trouble? Do you ever have soul trouble? Oh, baby, I know. <laughs> you say, well, I've never told you. Oh, but the Lord has told me. <laughs> All right. The example I wrote down here, and you can write down this scripture, it's 2 Kings 5, verse 9 through 18. 2 Kings 5, 9 through 18. It's the story of Naaman. And, uh, you know, he comes, he, he, he's, he's the commander of the forces of Syria, which is pretty, I mean, he's a man, he's a man's man, he's a warrior, you know, and uh, he's just got one problem, he's a leper. He's a leper. And it's hard to get past that because people don't want to touch him or whatever. And so, you know, I, he's talking about it and his wife's talking about it. I wish we could do something. And they got a servant girl, a servant. Do you understand? A servant planted of the Lord. <laughs> a servant girl. You know, she could be going, I hate this place. And I hate you people. And I, no, she, she says, well, there's somebody in Israel that can take care of this. And so, yeah, there's a little ringing in the... <clears throat> so he says, uh, well, let's, let's go down there and meet with him. So he goes to his house, has one of his... He goes down there with chariots and a bunch of his own guys, and he goes, have somebody knock on the door, and they knock on the door. And a guy who serves Elisha, comes to the door. And he tells him a story, and he says, goes back and asks, the, asks Elijah, what is she doing? He says, he, he said, go down to the water, go down to the Jordan River and wash seven times, and you'll come up clean. Well, he, he's, he gets so mad, he's so full of pride. He's such a great man, it's, and, and 
whether you're rich in money or rich in greatness, it is hard to enter this kingdom because you have to get low. You have to get low. I was, I was told, or I, I read it somewhere, I was told that there is a, <clears throat> that there is a, an entrance into Jerusalem that's called the Eye of a Needle. And, and I think I read it in one of the, the books, Archaeology or something like that. It's called the Eye of the Needle. And, um, and it was a very low entrance. And so it was really, really difficult for camels to enter into there. They'd have to get really low and then work their way through. I don't know. I don't, you know. That's not in the Bible, so I don't know. But it certainly fits that if Jesus was thinking instead of, you know, what we call a needle. And I would, I would imagine they didn't have little metal things anyway. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm just guessing here. Um, that he was talking about something that is so high and, you know, hump and all this kind of stuff that it's really, really difficult for them to get really low. <clears throat> that fits. People, that fits. Because it is, it was really hard for them to take that. He gets upset. I mean, he gets angry, and he's, he, let's get out of here. We're, we're leaving. And it's, as they're going, one of his men says, look, you know, if this guy can do it, you know. He goes, well, we got better rivers than the Jordan. They're cleaner and all this kind of stuff. I ain't going back there. He goes, it's, you know, if this can happen, you know. He said, well, he didn't come out. He didn't even come out and greet us. He told his he sent a, a lowly servant to us. I can't hear from somebody that's that low. Well, you can't hear from Christ. And he, knowing all things were given to him and that he came from God and he goeth to, to God, takes off his robes, girds himself, and gets down and washes his disciples' feet. And he says to them, if I, your master, have done this, then you do it to one another. He wasn't talking about a foot washing service. He was talking about even in the midst of knowing the, the greatness, that all things were given to him of God and that he came from God and he's going back to God. He got down in the middle of that because he's saying, look, this is the guy to whom all things have been given, and I'm down here serving you guys. Like a slave, it, it's, it's a, that's a, that is a slave job, folks. It's a slave job, not a, not a servant. It translates at 95% of the time servant, and it should be slave. <clears throat> All right, so anyway, with, with uh, Naaman, Finally, he goes, you know, and the guy says, look, you can let your pride keep you from this. Thank God, man, this guy finally listened and he went back and, you know. And he did what was commanded and he came back, he came up out of that water cleansed. And he said to Elisha, he said, trying to remember all the story exactly. He said, when I go back to Syria, the king leans on my arm to worship the God of Syria. And he said, but I believe in this God, the true God. And I'm I'm basically I'm asking, will it be okay if when I do that, I in my heart I am not worshiping him. I am with the Lord. And I just said, yeah, it's okay. You know. I, first of all, we would never have said that it's okay. We would have said, no, 
you're helping him worship some false god. You need to rebuke him and then cut the head off of that idol and, and go running through the streets naked, yelling like a mad loon. No. No. You need Christ. Sometimes the Lord tells you to do stuff. You, you can see that with the prophets. But all of those prophets were bearing the burden and the sin of Israel and the burden of the Lord as servants and slaves to the Lord. They were. And I don't have time to explain all that, but clearly they, they were. Their, their trials and burdens were what the Lord was feeling, what the Lord was going through. And they bore that burden before the people. All right, we'll, we'll quit and I'll get me a new supply of tissue and we'll move on. So.